and tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. He took me when I was just a child. I never discovered the truth of my parentage, only that the master I knew all my life was not of my blood, and that he had taken me from somewhere he had never spoken of. All I remember from my childhood was toil and subservience to him and the knowledge that I had been chosen to be his heir. Perhaps the people of my homeland offered me to the master as recompense for his services and protection. Perhaps I had been abandoned, or then given away like an unwanted mongrel dog. Whatever my origins, wherever I came from, it didn't matter. My life was his to do with as he pleased. The stench and decay and blood were an ever-present part of my day-to-day -day youth, and the shambling undead corpses that were my master's thralls were my constant companions. After the master taught me how to conjure my first thrall from one of the bodies always on hand, I saw the embalmed and empty vessel as my only friend. The master put an end to that swiftly and destroyed the thrall once he saw my attachment to it and my habit of confiding in the lifeless corpse as I worked and practiced the arts of the necromage. I learned after not to see those dead husks as anything more than raw material and tools for the trade I was being groomed for. The villages surrounding the swamp I called home brought us the dead. The master was a caretaker of sorts, set up to take the dead from the living so that they would not have to bury the deceased or deal with the more uncomfortable tasks of preparing the body once the life force had left it. He arranged simple, solemn ceremonies where the bodies were laid out in a room for the families to grieve over before the black shawl was draped over the corpse, signaling the separation forever of the deceased from the living. Once they left, we began to harvest our payments. Bone and flesh, blood and organs, teeth and hair, marrow and fat. Those surrounding us knew what arcane magics and medicines the necromages used the bodies of the dead for. It had been the way of our people for centuries. We took not only those with family and friends, but criminals and unidentified beggars and wanderers who were found dead in the wilderness. Their corpse provided the leather, bones, and other material we used to furnish our home and create the many tools and everyday objects we required. The Master taught me to honor even the lives of the forgotten and the condemned, holding the same ceremony for all who pass through our hands. We are all equal at the moment of death and must all contribute to the living in some way when we die. Nobles and those of different cultures and beliefs may not choose this fate, but all we receive must have their life acknowledged as something that was of value and potential. Even if the person who left their body behind squandered that life through vice and criminality. Those who keep the old ways know that the flesh of the dead and the power that dwells in the muck and petrucian reek keeps the dark things at bay. The power of our people's blood gives me the power to command the dead and perform the magics I am teaching you as my apprentice. I chose you because your soul sang with the richness of the old bloodlines. Your blood possesses a particularly powerful combination of different lineages that makes you ideal to carry these traditions forward and protect our people and the world from what dwells below with the power of the blood and the edge of a blade forged from the bones of your kinsmen. This is the price our people pay for the protection of the blood. Our tools, furniture, and some of our own clothing were made from the material we took from the honored dead. 
that which was too damaged, diseased, or malformed for use in spellcraft and fleshworking was burned in the mighty furnace beneath the stone floor of our home. I ate with bone implements out of bowls made from skulls. I learned to bind books and tomes from human skin and mix potent elixirs from various flora and human fluids collected from the freshest dead. Our home was decorated with the dried bones and shrunken heads the master had collected over the years. Human leather was what my apprentice robes had always been made of. The skin of long dead people I had never known. Your culture may find this abominable, but the necromages of antiquity have thrived in harsh times and learned to honor the dead while using the material of their corporeal bodies once their spirits had moved on. The flesh gave selflessly, its purpose determined by necessity and the power of the blood grew as the traditions took root over time. After entire generations came and went, until it was commonly considered to be a fair exchange, the bodies of the deceased, given over willingly to the necromages, to supply them with the, what they required to keep the darker powers of the beyond at bay and protect the lands from predators that mortal men cannot fathom. As I grew to maturity and near adulthood, the master revealed that his time was drawing near. He was ancient. His powers and connection to the realm of the dead extending his life far beyond any normal man. He informed me of my true purpose, the reason he had taken me from whatever life I had as a babe. I would soon learn all his secrets, all his knowledge, the rituals required to put the dead to rest and command the blood, to bind the dead and denizens of the dark to my will, in service to my fellow man. We dwell in the muck and the awful of this world so that the rest of our people can live lives far removed from the torment of the grave, he told me as I practiced spell forms with my quill in a flesh-bound book of my own making. Some of us must be surrounded by the rot and dead so that their passing will not be in vain. The greatest sorrow of our people is to find one who has died rotting away in the woods or some murderer's basement. Their souls are not at rest and cannot hope to be unless some part of them that is left is used for something to aid the living. As I grew and learned more, the master grew weaker and weaker. His many years were consuming him and the powers of his grimoire and knowledge of arcane magic could no longer sustain him. The day finally came, and I awoke to my duties to find the master death's door. I walked down the stairs from my room to brew some tea and begin processing the body of an old widow that the townsfolk of Grey Hollow had brought us the night before, and found him sitting by the fireplace. He barely moved, and his breathing was shallow. He spoke to me in a whisper, the fluid in his lungs rattling as he instructed me to prepare my final ritual as his apprentice. Though he may have had more days ahead, he knew he was dying, and that the rest of his life would be nothing but suffering, as he would be confined to his bed. He was ready to die, and I was now ready to ascend from my apprenticeship. As the old master sat wheezing in his chair, made from skin and bone, I gathered the herbs and tools I would need for the butchery to come. When I prepared my tinctures and salves and began burning the sage, I lifted the master to the table and laid him down gently. I took up the long bone pick and thrust it firmly into the base of his skull, puncturing the brain and ending his long life mercifully and with reverent care. Next, I turned the body on its side and made incisions in the places that would allow the blood to flow from the, his body and collect in the bowl that sat on the floor below the hole at the foot of the table. After my meditation, I lifted the bowl and handed it to one of the undead thralls to hold as I continued. I sent two more of them to collect the wood and 
build the pyre, for the burning of the master's remains would not be used. Skin was flayed, and the flesh was removed. I wound sinew around a spool to use for thread. I removed the long bones and set them aside to dry. I chanted prayers while I worked, offering my respect to the spirits of decay, and beseeching the blood to bestow its power and protection as I harvested what could be used from the master. The heart, lungs, stomach, bladder, and male organs were placed in a pot and boiled over the fire with the blood that had been collected. The following day, I mixed the tincture of Rathsbane and midnight berries with mashed and liquefied organs, the sacred concoction necessary to anoint my newly crafted tools. Three days without sleep passed as I worked enslaved over the master's remains, tanning the skin so that I might bind my own grimoire as the bones dried on the salve on my own flesh burned and filled my head with a heady dizzying sensation of its effects on my mind. Dark hallucinations came upon me as I breathed in the vapor. I watched as a golem of flesh formed from the bodies of a thousand infants sewn and stitched together rose from the swamp and reached out to devour me and swallow the world with me. Shadow serpents flowed in and out of the walls of the hinge. I had now inherited black inky lengths of darkness that bared only fangs as they swam through the air. I fought the visions with my will, and the knowledge that I remained in my home, surrounded by my thralls and with duties I had committed my life's oath to carry out. Once dried, I gathered the small bones I needed for the amulets and tools I still needed to craft. A knife handle, my own bone pick, a wand of finger bones, and other esoteric implements to what came and numerous to record here. The spine, long bones, and skull became my staff, and two rib bones were made into daggers. All of this was daubed with the concoction I had made whilst I sang the hymnal of death's loving embrace and blessed his bones with powerful protection spells. What remained of the skin after I had set aside that which I needed for my grimoire, I used to craft a chest piece and hood. I mounted the sternum and the rest of the ribcage on the chest piece and etched runes of power all along its surface. Each rib was scrawled with runes and spell forms from the tip to where the ribs joined the center. With the rising of the sun on the fourth day, I penned the last of the spells and rites into my grimoire, using my master's own to copy the necessary passages. My work done, I summoned all five thralls to me. They stumbled decrepitly into the house and began gathering the master's leftover remains and the tools he had crafted from his own predecessor's corpse when he had ascended in his youth. The dried corpses put everything into a long coffin and carried the pine box to the pyre, the final resting place of the necromage that had been my only companion for the entire span of my life. The fire was set, and as the dead returned to their tasks, I watched the pyre begin to burn. I stood there, tears in my eyes, and feeling the texture of the bones of my master as I held my staff in one hand and caressed his skin as I held my newly bound grimoire in the other. I had become the master, the necromage of my people, bound to this place and sworn to care for the dead. It would fall to me to see that the spirits of decay remained appeased, and to ensure that the knowledge of my master would be passed on once I took an apprentice of my own. I must continue to keep the covenant of my homeland in our traditions, and maintain the unbroken line of masters that came before me. I am the master, Corpus Arcanus, he who must live in solitude and harvest the dead, so that they may know peace beyond the veil.
tales for dark nights.